And then as soon as I see that we are actually live, I will do a dumb introduction or something. Or something. Something. Something is always nice. All right. It looks like we're live, but we have the uh, commercial playing on Twitch right now. So I guess we'll go ahead and start. Uh, welcome to Duckworks Podcast version 0.01. We have Fox and, of course, the very lovely Killer Pigeon joining us today. Uh, we were supposed to have a couple of other guys, but time zone issues and whatnot. And hey, this is this is, this is we're working on it here. All right. All righty. So. Oh yes, I'm. I'm oh, you, can, you can't see, but I'm. I'm flipping my hair out right now. So. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. <laughs> Maybe. All right. So let's jump right into it. We've had a tournament going on, and things have progressed and stuff, and I don't know anything about it. Please educate me. <laughs> Who, sorry? Who was the other team? Because yeah. I can't remember now. No, I'm looking at the wrong thing. I messed up, uh, and you guys haven't uh, been... Demons of the Ancient World, there we go. Demons of... Okay, there we go. <laughs> it's, it's an acronym pretty much of Dota, I don't know how I forgot that. But uh, yeah, that was actually a, a pretty fun match to watch, but it was a bit one-sided. Um, we do have a match today, actually, I noticed. Uh, or do we? In the forums. Yeah, uh, Loa versus Kerr. So, oh. a really, really good matchup to watch. Oh, that's going to be one to Pumped see. What later. is that scheduled for? That is, I believe... Here we go, T time zones, again. Yeah. Time zone. Uh, <laughs> time zone alert. That is, uh, I believe, scheduled. Uh, here we are. 6, 6 UTC. 6 p.m. UTC. 6 p.m. So, UTC. All right. Okay. So let's say four hours from now. I'm going to Wonderful. say that. Yes. Yes. Uh, so that is sure to be a, a, a really good match. Uh, yeah, it's kind of all tapered off, it feels like, uh, to me. We're just waiting on, really, US2 pool uh, more than anything. Which, uh, of... which is something that we've not heard word from yet. Um, yeah, we're exactly. We're waiting for the US2 pool. Uh, two pool. And from what I understand, um, the team that Honey Badgers knocked out yeah. Neurogenesis, correct? Uh, they're yeah. getting transplanted from U.S. Pool 1 into U.S. Pool 2 because U.S. Pool 2 is suffering a bit and we're wanting to move this forward. Yeah, yeah. There is actually a, a match planned so far that I can see here for Tuesday. Tuesday? Um, okay. Cas Caspian are going to play. Um, and I think... It looks like uh, Iodin is agreeing. So at least uh, Caspian and... Caspian, sorry. And someone else can get a match going. Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, hopefully. But uh, looking at the actual standings, like we are in a good position just waiting on US2. And then the match today, which will sort out the European region air pools. So we can and then match. after that, um, it's into our semifinals, of which yeah. um, we have a crossover going for everyone to understand this. The winner from U.S. Pool 2 will go to fight the loser of U.S. Pool 1, and so on. So yes. that means that Helion 3 will be moving to fight the winner of U.S. Pool 2. Um, and if, if uh, the stars align... That means Helion 3 and Limu uh, might be fighting in the 
uh, finals at the end of this. Yes, it's very possible. In a best of five. Yeah, in a best of five. All right. <laughs> oh my! There's just just a whole bunch of a whole bunch of fun organizational things going on with yeah the, uh, yeah. It's it's kind of like it, a, a it's early access game of shoots and ladders. <laughs> Can I say that for this sort of thing? Is early access like it's been a massive learning thing for me? Yeah, uh, that, that it's it's been it's been crisis management training. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, you you guys at Edge Case, as far as I know, don't don't have uh, a background in actually doing esports. So you know, yeah, you gotta you gotta work out all of yeah. these things. It's ahead not of what time. I was like hired to do initially. Uh, yeah, I'm say <laughs> that. we're all here. It just kind of happened. All, it was like, okay, let's go. Let's you. do this. <laughs> Cheering you on. <laughs> Strap on some boots and let's uh, give this a <laughs> shot. And I, I, I really, I really am happy with like what we've created so far and the fun that it's been. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, a lot of just organization and and stuff is. I'm looking at it very critically, and what we can do better, and make it way more fun for way more teams. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And uh, as we, we spoke about briefly, once drafting mode comes into the game and once balance comes into the game, it's going to be a lot easier for more competitive teams to join in and, you know, start up their own little, hey, we have a group of people, we want to get into this, but we don't want to bounce back and forth between forum postings just to, you know, get a name for ourselves out. We want to have yeah. a ranking yeah. system. We want to have, you know... An ability to say, yeah, we're we're at this tier. We can play against these people. A system like that would be very nice to have and give the game some life because it's introduction to people to play with their friends. Absolutely, yeah. Like, and uh, yeah, at no as point has anyone just about, been like, yeah, we should never do that. <laughs> the drafting and friend system has to be introduced into the game at the same instance. Yeah, this and is, you guys this are, is the. Yeah, Sorry, you guys continue. are very, very swamped with your work, so we're looking at a time frame of maybe two and a half months here. Oh yeah, um, that is like for the first, the first iteration, of course. Right. Um, yeah, it's a strange thing because there's two sort of ideas that seem to be floating around, and this is like coming from people playing the game, of like people. I don't know if there's like a polish. To fractured space where people seem to think oh it should definitely have all of these right now uh like the systems like drafting and friends and stuff like it is still quite early um, yeah wasn't it just like six months ago that you started off that looked like something that came out of a 1990s yeah. video game <laughs> yeah yeah you, you guys like plus to adding all the ships and stuff arcade like it. style polygon ships and little <laughs> particle pew pew beams I remember those days fondly. <laughs> like when uh, I got in on the game, all ships were just grey blocks, really. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And now it's so come a this, long way, this, all the way from those grey blocks to these really impressively large and well modeled spaceships. Shout out to Millennia for doing a wonderful job there. Yeah, and uh, uh, and Alex, because uh, obviously. Oh yeah, Alex is the one that does the TDS, right? Like uh, Alex does the Zarek, I believe. He does the Zarek. Uh, okay, so the who's guy doing the Sean in uh, the US, I believe, uh, does um, the TDS for us. Okay, cool, very neat. And we've uh, got more people uh, coming to join us. I think more designers, and uh, definitely uh, Will wants to get another environment artist in. But yeah. It, I, Getting back to the original thing, you know, there must, I, th I feel like Fractured Space has some sort of polish to it where people think all, all the essential systems that you think of a game like this should have, should be in there already. And right. Yeah, but it's give it simple. two and a half months, we'll hopefully have something which, uh, say, drafting comes in and then we can get good balanced matches where everyone's not going in enforcers and hunters and can actually make decent team compositions yeah absolutely uh i feel the enforcer hunter thing is still going to be pretty strong and this is a good segue into this next topic here yeah. recently um in the clan branch servers we have been testing a new 6v6 mode mm. um and it has brought 
new life to the game in a very interesting way, as you don't have to worry about having that extra guy allocated to sitting still. Um, like you say, you have one sniper on your team, and then everyone else gets to do what they do. Um, and you get to have three people versus three people in a lane, and this changes the dynamic pretty large. We've, we've been experimenting back and forth between Phoenix and Helion 3 Gaming, um, and playing back and forth in this new match, uh, testing the balance. And each time it surprises us, because it works out so well for each team. Um, sometimes things end in a landslide, because it's you know a bad pick composition against another bad pick composition. Uh, and that's just how it goes. We played around with various different comps, and then we tried to do a match where everyone one took one of each ship so we never had two of the same ship and that was pretty cool that went good um so going into that it's something that i personally would like to see in the live branch in the future as maybe an option exactly Absolutely. as other other moba style games have done recently i um, um so, yeah. just interject quickly i've been playing smite and like looking at the, their game modes and stuff and I, I think that is a really fun way. Like you could have your OG classic five v five, and then something akin to FPSs. They do the six v six, but we put it into ours, and then we go for the great granddaddy of the ten v ten. Like if we could get that to work, I think that would be pretty amazing. Yeah, that's that's up at the pinnacle of we've optimized everything. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And we can have things like say playlists of or. Uh, yeah, even like a 6v6 match, but everyone's destroyers. Like, that is that particular game mode for, say, that week. I think that would be pretty cool. This is and, the, uh, just, just as a safety net, this is all spitballing right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is, is not this me. Is, yeah, no, no, this, this is not me deciding. There are, there are, there are uh, no guarantees being there's, made. There's no Half Life 3. <laughs> we're, we're fine. Yeah. This is something also I was quite nervous about coming on here. We, <laughs> every, like people at work are going to come watch this, but like, Crispy, what the hell are you saying? What? <laughs> and uh, other people outside in the community may watch it, and they'll be like, Oh, he said that. It's going to happen. Nope, but, no, no, yeah, that, no. That is the, it is, it is <laughs> eventual <laughs> hopes for the future that we would like to see come to fruition through teamwork uh, of us, the teams, and the devs at Edge Case Games. Yeah. Hope, hopes and dreams until the reality, but fun to talk about nonetheless. Yes. All right, but yeah, definitely the the six v six. I've been able to participate in a little bit of those, and those have been really, really fun. Would you say it's is way more fun? Ah, uh, it's different. Definitely, I agree that having kind of having three people in in each lane, so each lane's even lends itself to having, uh, like, you can think about your lane comps, you can think about the enemy's lane comps, you can, it yeah. does also, like Fox said, give you that, uh, that confidence that you're not missing somebody. It's like, oh, yeah. it's 2v3, we don't want to do anything, we're going to sit on our, sit on you our base. You can actually be some sort of, like, mini fight. Right. Yeah. You, you can set aside the ability to have two DPSs and one support in each lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, if, if you're, you're suffering against someone else, you can swap out either your disruptor support or your Corvette support from A to B and say, hey, you're more effective over here. And the enemy team can try and counter that with another DPS ship. And it turns into this interesting game of ship chess, kind of, to where, mm -hmm. yes, there are ships that are better than others in some regards, and you just have to make those sacrifices to swap back and forth. Yeah. Um, like the lane Zared was in um, last night, you were doing exceptionally well against <laughs> what you were fighting. And then our lane, which was fighting a frigate, a equalizer, and a disruptor, absolutely just kind of walked through everyone. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was really nice to be able to to I was playing I, I've played mostly Corvette in those matches and it was really nice to, you know, pick a ship I that to heal. Yeah. You you've got yeah. you've got two healers, you can you can mix it up. Uh, I think uh Fox when you and I were playing as Disruptor Corvette we just we picked a lane, and then when the big team fights at Gamma came in, and they were that it was almost was always six v six at Gamma, yes, which is it was always six v six. It was such a cluster f. Yes. Oh my! <laughs> you saw the uh, the infiltrators ions come in, and you're thinking, 
move, 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 yeah. move. <laughs> it really, it really uh, enabled a whole lot of the, a whole lot of flavor to to come out and be be very present because you're not, you're not. It, it's a little bit harder to min max with an even number of people in a lane because you don't have the potential of getting that that odd extra person in your lane and you're you know you're screwed at the start of the match also uh, you have to have a good combo to mm -hmm. go against three others yeah what i've personally noticed about the mode more so than anything even with just one extra person when you get into those large fights you're getting focused a lot less. People are dividing their attentions. And it's not going to happen in any kind of competitive play against, you know, coordinated teams. But even with our coordinations, like in the night prior, it was, I'm safe. I'm a little more safe than I was before because I have that extra guy here with me to have my back. Mm -hmm. If it was just, you know, 2v3, I'm going to die immediately. I'm the support. But yeah. since I have two guys with me, they can keep me more safe and I can keep them more safe. But it's also true for the other team. So the engagements are a little longer, they're a little more thought out, um, and they can also be quite more abrupt because if you do things right, it's just an absolute steamroll through that lane. Mm -hmm. uh, what did it do for like uh, match times? Um, uh, like was, you, you guys would have been like pretty in-depth and pro, so they're going to no, no, go was, along... It was consistent. It was consistent. Oh, really? The thirty-minute duration that we're used to in live play. Mm -hmm. It just it changed the dynamic. Although, to be perfectly fair, at least most of the games that I remember did up did end up being a little one-sided for one reason or another. Maybe, yes. maybe, maybe that's simply due to the fact that you know this this the with the caliber of players that we had there. You know, the slightest bit of uh, uh, of yeah. stacking uh, of of the players could could change it that much but overall it 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 kept everything the same while making it also completely different <laughs> it just gives it a, a nice feeling i i would like to try one out i, I need to remember to set the server well, back before this last night i i was relaxing uh <laughs> I'll you be honest. Have relaxed with us, Crispy. I, I was playing Destiny. What? Well, we love you too. <laughs> <laughs> we can share your love with us more. No, no, I, I will definitely uh, uh, come and join in um, in a, in one of the games. Right, in a couple of okay. the games, just one of them. I'll be yeah. in there. Yeah, and yeah. But, um, so, this has all been a reminder. I need to set set the servers back for the tournament, but then I'll switch them back. Later yeah. In, in, yeah. In fact, if any of you uh, Devi types out there are watching this and are interested in, you know, coming in and hanging out for a couple yeah. of 6v6 matches, I mean, I don't, I don't think anybody would complain. No, you know, we'd all we all love it. It, it. It's it's a great place to get some very live, very raw feedback. Definitely. And I'm sure a, a, a gang of the dudes would be uh, down with playing uh, 6v6 and seeing how the, the flow of the, the match changes and the lane compositions. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, that, that's a good note. Speaking on changes, um, so we heard that Willis was out sick for two weeks. For those of you yeah. that don't know, uh, Willis is their map designer. Um, so for those two weeks, assets and things were being developed in the background and moving forward. Um, but now that he's back on track, um, and we're, you guys are working on the new map. Uh, do you care to tell them a little bit about it? Uh, so, yeah, I sat down with Will and got uh, a couple of notes here about uh, what he's been doing and, like, on his time off, things that have changed, like the code help that he needed. Um, so, regarding the level, his aim is to have every sector reworked somehow. Uh, making it different that might not happen all at once and it's very likely it'll it'll happen in stages like one one monthly update will rework maybe two of the lanes or one of the lanes i don't know how that's uh gonna go but yeah don't expect a full r rollout of every change um but his biggest desire with these reworks is to make them all feel unique uh to themselves um uh, so different lighting, that's one of the things he wants. Separate code lighting, 
for each sector. And that's where that, that new uh, environment designer is going to be coming in, right? Yeah. Um, yes. And helping with that. And he also needs the, the code for that to work. Um, One very neat thing that he mentioned to me about this new development in the map <laughs> is each new sector... Um, is going to be compartmentalized to where you can have a different skybox in it now. So yeah. not only will it have new assets and resources for the players to explore around and fight around, but it'll be a completely different background feel and yeah. bring you know a new visual to the game and give you guys infinite possibilities to add even more sectors on top of that in different game modes in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he was saying like he wants things like icy sort of zones where it's all cold and bitter and then other ones where there's a great huge sun or something right there and everything just doused in red and all this great lighting and fog effects and stuff and it's it sounds really cool when he says it not when i say it though <laughs> oh just 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 imagining you know jumping in jumping into alpha one day and instead of you know giant gray rocks it's you know giant hunks of ice and maybe there's like yeah. a saturn like planet in the background yeah I really it's... liked in the evolution video where you see like ice chunks. I was like, ah, oh, yes. yeah, like really, really nice ones of those. Ah, or if you, it. you know, if anyone's played Eve, we've all seen the ice mining fields, and some of those can be large and impressive. And you think, yeah, I'd like to have a fractured space fight in that. That'd be yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty <laughs> wonderful. That would be, that would be very, very excellent to see. Um, he said he wants more destructible um, objects and like parts of the environment, so things like small asteroids and uh, the forward stations, the shields on those, um, which he's talked about quite a lot. He, at the moment, has made a change to Gamma, where no matter where you are, it will give you continuous heat damage. And okay. whilst we were talking about this, he, came, he then had the realisation, he was like, oh really, I can't do that. Because ju even if you'd gone there by mistake, jumping out, you'd get the four times uh, mm. damage from that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that would be a um, good way to kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> his but his like main intention is to try and get across some information to the player that going to gamma early on probably not the the greatest idea, not the smartest of moves. Um, yeah, or it co or it comes at a risk for when the tactical jumping comes in where you'll have more jump points available to you from Gamma into lanes. So you, maybe you could jump to Gamma and then jump to one of the jump points in a lane, but you'd take a bit more damage because you're in Gamma and it's a bit of a risky journey. But For anyone who doesn't know, the plan for Gamma is it's going to be now in low orbit over a large sun. Yeah. Um, and as Very you pretty. get lower in elevation you're going to be taking more and more heat damage as you get closer to the sun um so and gamma is becoming its own mini boss to where there will be this large focal heat beam that will shoot at a designated target that it deems in its aggression system um and they're going to have to tank that damage while the team attempts to take gamma yeah uh Talking of the eye, let's say in yes, the, 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 the eye, the eye um, that's probably going to be one of those rollout um, yeah, stage things. That, that'll where, be a compartmentalized thing in the future. Yeah, uh, and that won't, like, we may have the sun coming, but it'll still be the capture uh, gamma sort of mechanic mm -hmm. until we actually get the, um, the mini boss 100% uh, sort of complete and working. Yeah, there, there there was a there was a uh, now deleted from the internet preview uh, a while yeah. back <laughs> where we where we got to see what the uh, what what the what the eye of Sauron robot looked like and it it was actually uh, very very uh, impressive to see and I'm I'm looking forward to it shooting people not me yeah. I hope. But speaking of shooting, uh, Chris, would you like to get a little deeper into the forward base mechanics and the new home bases? Uh, right. This Segway master over here. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So um, when I was talking to Will on the forward stations, 
he's hoping to add uh, weaponry. And what he hopes those we- like the weapons to be is a mixture of, say, like the Ripple Blaster from a Disruptor, missiles, and it has its own uh, point defense system. But at the moment, he doesn't. He can't get those into like one singular unit to do all those things. It would have to be separate targets. Uh, how it's right now constructed. So his main intention is to get those working together. Because having, if you think about it, on the forward station, he wants two weapons on each side. But right now, how it's set up, that would have to be six targets because of the three different systems. Okay. Uh, and that's and that's just a bit too much, really, uh, for a player to like target upon, and also with finesse at the moment. You think it would? You think six would be too many for a team pushing a lane? It could be. Uh, no, it would be just confusing for people to understand. Really, if you're getting in there at first, you'd be like, oh, or exploitable in a way, like just take down the point defense and wipe out all of them. Whereas if they're all combined. It could be right. a lot more enjoyable yeah. and less time-consuming. Mm-hmm. I feel like understandable. Yeah. Um, so he wants to combine those all into one weapon system, where it does three different things. Um, let me just read my notes. They're a bit too long. Uh, uh, he also wants with the mining stations to add like more information about what they're doing. So things like little mining drones. Uh, moving from the station down to the asteroid where that has like a small latched on station where people are working and they're patrolling back and forth and maybe the ships could change to show who's in control of that that station but just more representation of what they're actually right. doing more, and, more giving, and giving cues. life yeah, yeah giving yeah. life to giving the, life uh, to the map yeah um, oh. apparently he's got the the codes for debuff attacks is now working on the weapon systems like the turrets because uh, when we were doing tests, things like the Enforcer were terrible against the forward stations because their, oh, uh, their Escalate didn't uh, apply. Oh my. Yeah, so... Not and then we have anything. things... Yeah. Interesting, and things like Ambush didn't work, uh, Mark Targets and, and that, so... And, and then we have... Potential, you know, breaking things like the frigate shield. Um, what happens when the frigate gets base aggro and can just not care? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, that that that's the thing we have to consider too for the future. Yeah, definitely. Um, and when those all these systems are in place, that's something we could definitely look at, yes. like how uh, ships work against. Because that was the way he was designing them. It was he was having to think of all the ships say like the new shield in front he was like well if a sniper is up here it could just take out this blast shield and then it has straight line of sight to the jump inhibitor so what you're meant to do is take that take out the jump inhibitor so you can actually jump to the enemy base uh but they could be miles away and just pot shot at it without ever having to get close and and take anything and it would be hard for the other team to take them but then he'd have the hunter and he's like can the hunter be up close and at this certain angle where nothing can attack it so it's quite a hard job really um yeah. i feel for will that he has to consider all these ships and more ships are going to get added of where um there could be exploitable sort of things like that he is he is very much in the in in the trenches of uh, of game design right now yeah where... oh goodness yes it's a lot of work yeah this is this is this is this is where this is where you know the uh, uh, getting the information out here to to the community will help, and then like all of us thinking about ways that potentially we could break things, and uh, maybe you know posting on the forums about that. All you organized team people, mm, yes, think about <laughs> think about how to break stuff. And and and, and and let folks know because and, and break. Let it us know how you break it. Yeah, don't, don't uh, go, hey, Mia, 
<laughs> us, us and Crispy. Um, we got a bunch of the people together from Loa, um, from Helion 3, and from Phoenix. And we all got together on the clan branch. Uh, no, no, it wasn't clan branch. It was live branch. We all sat we down. We people out we, of live games. We, we were like, yeah, hey. Yeah, we were like, yeah, no, you, you got to go. We're testing. And they're like, what? You got something to do like, here. We're sorry, but you walked in the wrong neighborhood. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, we, we sat in Gamma shooting each other for about two hours, and we finally nailed down the assist bug for everyone that's been really confused about that, of why why am I getting 30 assists per game? What is this? It's because of a little annoying thing with the small ship system. I'm not going to get into it because it can be exploitable, but um, <laughs> we found it. It's being fixed. Hey, man, those 72 assists in my flagship were legit. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, seven oh <laughs> dear. This is this is the this is the stuff I find really fun, the meaty underbelly of, of game design and, it, and when you actually, when we actually found it, it was just like, oh that was kind of simple in some ways. <laughs> oh like, yeah. Never yeah. never actually obvious. kind of thought of that. But you never thought of it until, you know, you get a bunch of people to go, like, jump into a pit and do dumb things and then figure out, oh, look, this dumb thing worked. Uh, No, that was really fun. And thanks to everyone who helped out there. Yeah, thanks, guys. It was great support. Really helping Edge Case move forward here. Yeah. And realize just stupid things. Um, On that Uh, note, do we... Got one more thing about like home yes. bases on the yes new- yes the home bases How they are getting turned into uh, the the big boss <sighs> battle of fractured space and how you've got to take those out and Willis gave me a little trivia fact it's based on a stool like a designer stool that a you sit designer on designer stool yeah. I can see but, that but yeah. flip to the side yeah but flip to the side because it's yeah. got I don't the know if it's brands like. Ikea or something, I don't know. I'm going to say Ikea uh, at this point. Maybe it's an independent artist. Maybe, maybe. But yeah, it's got the rings to put your feet on. And I'm not sure if the rings like break off, symbolizing some deep meaning of how long they've been sitting in that chair. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's what needs. That's what everything needs. More symbolism. (laughs) Illuminati uh, but yes, the, the bases <laughs> are going to be large, and they're going to have defenses, and in the middle That's... of the base is going to sit a large sniper cannon, as it has been called in, in its development. The um, and the eventual goal of the game is to beat down the enemy base's defenses and, and destroy the central cannon, uh, which is the victory condition for this new map. Yes, that is correct. So uh, what Will wants to do is uh, put the weapon systems from the forward stations on the the main base as well. So yes. uh, those plus the base cannon uh, and maybe the all the turrets so far uh, will be replaced. Uh, but his main issue with the home base so far isn't those weapon systems. It's the size and scale. Like it is literally huge. The like the model of the of the station, yeah. but mm-hmm. it's uh, head to toe six flagships in oh diameter. My. Oh boy! Uh, but once you're in there and fighting, it doesn't feel massive. Yeah, exactly. Because the FOV of most ships, it zoomed out really far, and even right now. Uh, I noticed the biggest change when you guys went from Unreal 3 to Unreal 4, and the lighting really brought out new characteristics. Uh, and I don't think changing the FOV would be much of a great idea either, because we need to see what's going on around us. We need that at least 75 to 80 degree field of view, sometimes 90. Some people like the 90. Um, but the base itself, you guys wanted it to feel large and imposing. And when you first represented it, I was thinking that's going to feel a bit small in game. Like the current base, it feels a little small. Even if you rotate it on its side, it's not really that grand. It's not massive. It's not really anything of a starport to be proud of. So seeing it like scaled up as a test, at least by like 30, 35%, to like see how imposing it is then and, you know, not have the assets break because the texture resolutions are now wrong. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. 
that kind of just gave That's me just something I uh, would like a, a little panic attack. I don't know how Will's feeling right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure uh, Will will play with it and think, yeah, that, that's... We it could try. be something as simple as, like, when it gets the proper art on it, like, it has a really big art change so far from how it's usually been, uh, but if, you, if we add more lighting or certain atmospheric things possibly could make it feel bigger. It's, that's not something, say, I'm fully in tune it's, with or actually know anything a, about. For designing something like that, it is about making something seem large in your FOV, but it's also about adding minute detail to make something else seem larger in comparison to something smaller. Yeah. Something mm -hmm. you're used to. Something like a forward station, let's say. If the forward station wasn't that huge, um, then that would give contrast to the home station that is now huge. Yeah. Or other elements floating in the home sector um, that just you know give a little Things bit of, hey, that's recognizably that size. Yeah. That that yeah. that yeah that actually that actually reminds me of the earlier days uh, when the ships were still being iter iterated on. Uh, there there, but from one patch to another, there was not a bridge, and then there was a bridge on several of the ships. That that platform that usually sits on top, where you go, okay, yeah, the commander's right there. Adding that really helped sell the ships as being huge. Because it gave you it gave you a frame of reference, and you just need need that for the stations. We don't. Yes, I, exactly. I, I, I can't think of I can't think of any sort of bridge analog for a station that would work. Maybe <laughs> the docking bays. I don't know. The docking bays, starports, other small ships coming and going from the station. Yeah. yeah. Um, you could even have something like a, um, a, a, a POS system in EVE. Uh, no, no, not POS system. Sorry for all, all the people that play EVE. Customs office. Uh. A customs office that sends goods up and down from the um, uh, planet surface to this actual station. Mm -hmm. and it's kind of like, okay, that's a little launch bay. It's launching goods in those crates and containers. Or even as you know, you've seen little containers on your ships dotted around because we all like to carry cargo with us in the battle. Yeah, I know. I, I, I have like in, you know on my disruptor just an entire out, crate full of bananas. Yeah, um, you might find someone <laughs> that wants them, sell them off, bit more profit. Boom! Like two birds, yeah, one exactly. stone. Exactly. But even adding like a loading dock where you can see all those little crates and containers scattered around and being carted in and out by other vessels is kind of like, that's a good frame of reference. That mm -hmm. thing's big. Yeah. Yeah. No, that definitely. Would, that would be that would be perfect, I think. Some I sort know. of hubbub going on yeah. around which... Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's just bringing animation and life to the game. Um, would we care to uh, talk about balancing now and your thoughts on it? Um, I don't have anything about the upcoming balance, but... Well, not the upcoming balance, but the current balance, and you as a player that's been playing Fractured Space, what you would like to see out of it as well. I still... I've turned on the frigate screen more than You've anything. You've turned on the frigate screen? Yeah. Okay. I think... How do you feel about the frigate screen now? I think it's, it still pops up a bit too much. Like... Yeah. The, the, the addition of the short screen really... Helped. I actually prefer the short screen to the long screen, but the long screen is still the old version that we had to deal with for ages that caused much wailing and gnashing of teeth on the forums. Um, I remember those days. Yeah. They were too. dark. <laughs> yeah. Um, but there hasn't, at least to my knowledge, been a pass on it to try and bring it in line with the... Uh, the short screen uh, with regards to cooldown and duration. Personally, I think this, the short screen hits that hits that note of, holy crap, I need to have this up. Okay, we're good. That, that an ability like that really needs, because as <coughs> it is right now, the long shield isn't a shield. It is a, it is a siege tool. Yes, it is an absolute siege tool. It is a, you can't shoot me, I'm going this way, or you can't shoot me, I'm going to kill you for the next 20 seconds and you can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, w personally, in the thoughts that I've had on it, I would like to see it have a health bar. I would like to see the screen take 
damage. Like, um, it, yeah. It, it, it can have its 20 second duration. It can stay up for 20 seconds. That's fine. But if it takes so much damage, but, it goes down. Tight, but tight. give it like half of the ship's total health, because it is a large target. It is easy to shoot um, if it's mm-hmm. in someone's face. Give it like half the ship's health and have it decay and break, then I think that would fix a lot of these problems. You could also tie it, tie it into kind of like how the well, no, exactly like how the cloak is tied in with the uh, oh, excuse me with with the infiltrator and the assassin. You could either have it, you know, last as long as you have energy and you're expending energy as you're holding down mouse two, or it could act as a artificial hit point pool where you know if you're being kind of skillful with it, your hit points will actually go back up a little bit because you're recharging it. What, like actually taking the kinetic energy from your enemy's weapons and feeding it into your health system? No, as in uh, you bring up you bring up the your your screen and your energy bar is the health. But it would behave. Oh, it would behave just oh, like, okay. just like the, just like the cloak on the assassin, kind okay, of yeah. similar. Where you know, as it's being hit, as it's being used up, your health is going down. But if it's up and not being hit, your energy will slowly go back up. So that gives you a little bit of leeway. Where if you're still, yeah, if you're still avoiding fire, you're getting a reward for that instead of just kind of going, eh, whatever, while it's up. I very much like that idea, Zerg. Yeah, that's, so that's do pretty... I. Jot I think that down. from... <laughs> Sorry, I think from... Because we've had a little uh, structure change because there's other people coming in. Uh, QA has moved, so I don't have as much of an ear into what is being planned and, mm-hmm. and such. But I do get the feeling it's like, right, we're bringing in energy. What can we do to each ship with that? Mm-hmm. And what you suggested, Zerg, seems like a, a perfect application or at least a, a really good one from my point of view on yeah. how to use energy with the uh with the screen okay i that just, that just popped into my mind as it's a it's a signature ability that is also relatively long term yeah like uh, like I, I i immediately as as soon as you said that i was thinking okay now how could i do it for the enforcer <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea how I could do it for the Enforcer because there's exactly. nothing long-term with it unless you take long boost, and even then, that's kind of... Yeah, if you if you tied its boost ability into the energy system to where it used the energy as fuel, mm-hmm. um, that would be a, a kind of neat idea. Yeah. Um, and, you know, all boost systems, because right now they're all time durations. There's not really much of a, a skill involved in saying, okay, I'm going to push this button, I'm going to hold down my throttle for X seconds, and then I'm going to release it, so I go about half speed to the target. I just want to boost a little bit, um, and that's, you know, long boost. It's kind of like you don't want to overshoot it completely. Otherwise, you're just going to fly right past the enemy's forward station. You're kind of sitting there like 5K off of it going, hmm, I should have slowed down sooner. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> See? You know this is fun. Should we should we go through and do the other ships just for just well, for yeah, uh, shits course. and giggles? Yes. All right. So we, we've got the enforcer. We've got the frigate. Uh, what's another What's another problem child right at the moment? The hunter. Uh, another problem child is the hunter, and <laughs> that does give me a very interesting idea. Okay. So, what if the energy system on the hunter? had a little bit of a slower recharge Mm -hmm. and we tied it into the blink yeah what if short blink long blink and medium blink weren't really a thing anymore but how long you held down your right click to drain your energy bar before releasing it and getting your distance Mm -hmm. so the charge up for long blink would be even longer but you would get you know that reward for holding it down as well as having the versatility to say i need to blink right now let me hold it down for a couple seconds and only move a couple thousand meters so then do you make the the side grade sort of your regen of the energy bar yeah something like that you sacrificing could... maximum distance for faster regen or, yeah or, you have or you could go the route of okay you've got twice as much energy but maybe half or a quarter of the actual regen that you've got right. you, you've got more 
staying power but less sustain, I guess, or go the other way where you've got like only a thousand energy, but you get relatively insane uh, energy regen because that that gets you that gets you two things that allows you to pick your level of staying power in an individual fight, and that will also artificially. Uh, not even artificially, like, directly impact the amount that you can blink, because let's say you go for that low energy, lo or low total energy, high regen option, you are limited to however much distance a thousand energy is going to get you. Whereas right. if you go for the high energy, yeah. okay, you've got four thousand energy to work with, you could... It wouldn't actually work, but maybe the math would work out, like, in, in, the, in the game sphere depending on where everything's placed that you could jump from one base to another even though you'd still be trapped in the sector something, something crazy like that something crazy yeah it, it's it's all thoughts for the future but i can also foresee problems with that mm -hmm. because you'd still have to introduce an internal cooldown mm -hmm. um and you know to prevent people from just you know blinking 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 and slowly chipping off their energy bar um and just kind of scooting across the map mm -hmm. um there, there's also, you know, the, the small internal cooldown. Like, do you make it the short blink cooldown? Do you make it the long blink cooldown? Because if it's the short blink cooldown, um, and you short blink, and then you uh, let your energy recharge, and by the time it's recharged, the cooldown is off, and then you can long blink right after you've short blinked. So that also really buffs the hunter in that way as well. So there would have to be mm. a way to mediate the cooldown versus how far you jumped. Okay. Yeah, that's that's true. Actually, uh, looking at... Look at, I really know I shouldn't be looking at chat, but I am looking at chat. So, Jiraiya <laughs> uh, just, just posted... Uh, uh, I think you could have each upgrade change the speed. It charges the blink. It would make long blink easier, but mean it's also harder to use short blink. So what he's saying there is have a version that fills... The, that eats up the energy quicker... Uh, so that you can get those longer range blinks faster, but that would effectively neuter your close range combat abilities because you hold it down for half a second, you're already jumping six or eight k maybe. You know this is true, yeah. And, and you know that would uh, it would increase your energy consumption. It would allow you to say, okay, I want something that's really fast because i'm i'm wanting to travel with my blink so that you could satisfy your long blink your hunter, old long blink needs your your long blink hunter coward ways yeah. of jumping out of a fight or you could Sorry. say i want something a little <laughs> a little slower because you know you want you want to be able to dance around somebody in a fight and i think that that would actually work pretty well that would and that's a wonderful idea jiraiya thank you mm-hmm Bravo. Uh oh. My background's gone. Now it's back. Oh. I don't have enough video queued up. Ah. Oh, man. <laughs> All right. Let's make more. All right. So. I, I, Jared, I, I don't currently have the, the stream open for reasons of bandwidth. So if there's any, you know, good good stuff coming through the chatter, do feed it to us. Uh, actually, um, if you want, you can go and just like pause. The, oh yeah, the that's stream, right. The the chat will still come up. What's your Twitch again? Twitch.tv/zerid. That's right. Hold <laughs> on, I'm dumb. Let me fix my dumb. Oh, unplug in my phone. Don't want to ruin the battery because it's new. Oh yeah, got to condition that thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um. Let's see what we're okay. We were discussing, we were discussing uh, balancing and possible yeah. usage for the energy system. For energy. Okay, so we've done uh, we've done the frigate. We've done the enforcer. The hunter, we've done the hunter. Yes. What's what's another? Uh, oh, reaper. I'd like oh, I'd like yes. to be able to hold down and eat up my energy on my scythe beam so that I can have the scythe duck back. Damn it. Mm. <laughs> uh, the. <laughs> The TDS flagship is kind of getting that, oh. in a way. Ooh. Yeah, that um, is a very, very uh, sexy piece of weaponry on the flagship. Um, 
which you'll see in due time. I think, I think, uh, is it Carla style that posted a, a yeah, the, a, the gif, a, the gif, yeah, of, of a, of a proper beam weapon instead of the pseudo beams that we have now, which, which have yeah. worked great so far, but I'm really excited I to see. I love my particle ray casts, especially when they were <laughs> blinding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, uh, I do, I do a little bit, a little bit miss the old blinding healing beam. Just, just, just a little bit. It gave it like a another, another use. It was, it was something for us to complain about. We love things to complain. About. <laughs> yes, B- bitching brings us together. <sighs> yes, <laughs> all in one. I, I guess we love it too. <laughs> Is but the... no, I am very stoked <laughs> to see uh, the new beam system, to see things tied together, um, visual effects for the future. Uh, I always love eye candy. Eye candy's marvelous. Um, so damage balancing um, and armor balancing oh. for some things right now. Um, you know, there's, there's some hits and there's some misses. Um, like currently there was a patch where they cut the brawler back a good bit, um, making it a lot less of an intimidating factor in a team fight or something to hold a point down. Um, now I've heard talks that they were wanting to bring the levels back up a bit. Have you heard anything about this lately? From the, uh, small test that I did on Friday, uh, there was a couple of brawlers and it seems to be coming back to its, uh, former self. Uh, there was the whole issue with adding in the point, like point defense changes, which nerfed it because the harpoon could easily just be batted away, um, right. and its its damage output was significantly reduced. Mm-hmm. Um, now, on that on that harpoon note as well, um, right now the harpoon is pretty much a one hundred percent guaranteed hit. It's always going to land. We've we've stacked three ships together and turned on point defense. It'll still hit you. Um, so that's a change that's coming. Yeah, uh, it's, it's been... still in need of a little bit of ups and downs to get it right because the first iteration of it was actually the best. If you're flying away from it, it gets shot down. If you're flying towards yeah. it, you're going. I I like that. Mm-hmm. I like yeah, that. But, but I think it's turning into a, like great. if it's one target, it's pretty much guaranteed to get it. But if there's more than one there's a good chance of taking it down. I think that's the implied change that's coming. Um, but I, yeah, I was a fan of the move away and be able to take it out yourself. Because it, right. it, it was a skillful thing to do. Like, you knew yeah, it was about it. It was a tactic. Mm-hmm. I would and you like... could get caught off guard by it. Yeah. If you were caught off guard, you'd get hit by it. If you were paying attention, yeah. you could dodge it. Um, yeah. Which was good gameplay. I would like you to stress that to your team. That's good <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Uh, as it, it it gave it gave the the brawler that identity of you are looking for somebody that's not paying attention or is out by themselves, and you're you're punishing. Basically, the brawler is there to to enhance and punish. You know when your team does teamwork and like when the enemy team doesn't do teamwork. Yeah, and and I think that that is maybe it's a bit extreme as it is now but that's what everything needs to be and i think i think for the most part everything is there actually i'm I'm trying to think of chips that don't work well chips that don't play nice together right now and there isn't one no not really Maybe maybe the stealthers, but they're kind of supposed to be able to do their own thing, and even then they're absolutely devastating. And team, it, it, going back to our six v sixes, there there were several times where this huge firefight was going on, and then all of a sudden I hear that little pew of an ambush. And I'm just like, oh dear god! Why? And then there was like three individual assassins all stacked on top of him, and you just saw missiles going everywhere. <laughs> kind of like, well. I can't help you there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. The brother, the brotherhood actually came together. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Quite, quite frequently, they all jump the same thing. They're very skillful about it. We 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 now need a uh, we now need a uh, hooded assassin skin. We need a gift for that. <laughs> Three assassins. We're just gonna have a an infiltrator <laughs> with like a, a 
stupid white coat lazily like tethered around it, I, held on by bungee cords. I actually, actually, I just kind of thought about it. An assassin with like this, the really sexy uh, uh, sculpted uh, cowling armor all <laughs> over it, kind of like the uh, the destroyer has over its engines. An assassin That's covered cool. in that would actually be pretty badass. That would be pretty cool. That would be. That would be your your uh, your your imperial style ship. I'm sure there'll be it. all sorts of skins and styles in the future as they go on. Uh, I, oh, I, absolutely! I, I very much look forward to them. Uh, sorry, sorry for the segue, or not segue, but uh, oh, no, tangent. That's what uh, we're here to do? We're making tangents. <laughs> we're having conversation. Actually, esports. Uh, esports. Esports. <laughs> Esports. Okay. Um, on the esports train while yes. we're here, um, I have a very interesting announcement to make. Recently, uh, my team has been in talks with iBuyPower, um, and we're talking uh, an eventual sponsorship later down the road, um, as well as iBuyPower taking interest in the competitive gaming scene for Fractured Space. I would also like to mention that iBuyPower has a CSGO tournament coming up here at 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time, and, and it's on their Twitch page, uh, Twitch slash iBuyPower. So check it out if you want. Um, but that's a huge deal for us. Um, it's a huge deal for Fractured Space, potentially, oh. you know, having something like that come into the fold. And all of us over here are very excited about it. Mm -hmm. No, it sounds really, really cool. A, a, and, really, uh, a, a big company now paying attention to the, the Fractured Space competitive scene, which, let's be honest, really isn't huge right now. No, 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 not at all. The huge. fact that we've got, um, we, we've got somebody, I know, I know for a fact that they, uh, for, for folks that follow the... Uh, the League of Legends competitive scene, the I bet Power backs uh, the CLG. Uh, so one of the bigger teams in North America. So these guys, these guys don't fool around. The fact that they're paying attention to Fractured Space now. That is, that is are, really cool. Yeah, it's yes. got me yeah. beyond excited. They, they want to see how the game develops in the coming months. Um, and they absolutely are interested to see it evolve into an eSport, which would be very nice. I think one of the main things for that kind of to happen is definitely some work on the spectator mode uh, yes, right now. Absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> I didn't realize what kind of state it was in uh, when I got my hands on it and was like, oh, this, this won't <laughs> this do. So <laughs> How do I do this? <laughs> It, it, I'm it, trying to move X, but I'm going Y. <laughs> it, it, um, it is it is functional. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It does its it, thing. It provides the functionality that it needs right now, but uh, yeah, it's one of the things that's come up when I've been talking to say Tom or something, and it's like, yeah, we don't really want to push this so hard because it doesn't look so like so nice and polished at the moment, mm -hmm. but definitely uh work on that would definitely help um bring interest and eyes even more eyes than right Ab now absolutely and to go uh, to go along with that of course the inclusion of being able to actually group with your friends and not just kind of say okay we're going to this server and we've got to do the swaps and yeah right. yeah so we're well, not expecting anything you know right now but in these coming months as things evolve and grow, we have the potential to get, you know, a lot more attention to Fractured Space, a lot more attention than the competitive gaming scene through, you know, large advertisement and marketing and things like that. Um, and, you know, see it really grow and really take off for a game we all love. And you've, you know, probably gone through blood, sweat and tears on by now, Crispy, as you're <laughs> trudging through the forums and putting out the community fires as there's, you know, the, the giant raging tire fire of frigate. <laughs> Fields and hunter blinks and all this other stuff going on, uh, and yeah, oh, and especially the the little burning uh, scooter tire in the corner that is jumping to gamma and winding up in the enemy base. <laughs> yep, <laughs> jumping what? Jumping to gamma? Oh, you've not had that one yet. I've oh. not had that one. If yeah, there is rare bug that when you jump to gamma, you it wind up in the enemy base, even though both forward stations are closed. 
Yeah. Oh my. Yes. I, that sounds fantastic. No way to reproduce it. It just happens. It just, it just pops in. It's like a sort of like mini power up that no one is yeah. told about. Like, that, here you go. Oh, you're level two. Yeah, good luck. That is that that is that is fantastical. That is see Yeah, we want to get rid of that. <laughs> no seeing and knowing about weird stuff like that is one of my favorite things about about uh well games in currently being developed. I I, I like that stuff. Even though most people actually don't. Nobody wants it used against them. No, no. <laughs> But hey, uh, having a potentially a level zero assassin in your base really isn't that big of a deal. Yeah, no. Um, it's just going to sit there. It's going to be level zero. It's going to think, <laughs> ha, I'm hiding. And then you shoot it and it's like shooting through rice paper. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, no, but well, congratulations on the I buy power stuff and working that out. And that's yes, really absolutely. cool. Yeah, I, I Hoping hope to make it... it a good thing for them as it's a good thing for us. Yeah, it, that will ha- having having that weight uh, behind fractured space will hopefully propel it forward to where it deserves to be. You know, this is this is this is something magical, and it is most mo- most people don't realize that, and that needs fixing. Yes, <laughs> I don't want to be seventy four percent on Steam anymore. <laughs> you want to get all the way to ninety eight. <laughs> <laughs> Overwhelmingly positive. Ah, uh, uh, the journey. It'll happen. Yeah, the happen. journey. Well, part of that is going to be adding, of course, you know, the new maps and new ships. Aha! I can do a segue too. Sometimes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you have, uh, KP. You have brought news of new ships, while while not like a whole lot of specific info, but some I have stuff. bullet points. Ooh, bullet points. Let us Ooh. let us bullet points. So, uh, starting with the TDS flagship, um, which <laughs> in the current build is called the Titan. Hmm. Uh, there is dispute about that because then it would be the, the Titan, Titan Fences, Titans. the literal Titan, Titan. from Eve. <laughs> it's exactly what it does. The Titan is this space bus that ports around other ships. So making it into a jump bridge is making it an Eve Titan. Yes. <laughs> this has been said before by someone, but uh, yeah, it's meant to kind of be uh, the bully against uh, mid to small ships. Um, okay. But that would uh, needs to come with the balance in test week coming tomorrow uh, for me. Um, it's got the fusion beam, which people have seen in the GIF. Mm-hmm. Um, and it takes a little bit of time to charge, and then it unleashes the, the great massive beam with the great sound effect, which sounds like it should be a, a station shooting down on the planet, but it's coming out of ship. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> That so sounds is, interesting. So, so, that, that gets me excited to see it. So we're getting an orbital ion cannon is what you're saying. Yeah, kind of. It, and it's Excellent. movable and it deals a lot of damage at the moment. And it was quite fun to play as, uh, even though I couldn't use the fighters on it. Because when we did the <laughs> test, if you unleashed the fighters, which worked fine on all the other ships, uh, it would crash the server. <laughs> <laughs> So well, there was a couple of times where I'd be in a dance as a Titan. There was two times, actually. And I was just about to kill someone, and they got me. And I was like, oh, but I got the big beam. <laughs> I'm the big guy. But, uh, yeah, it was definitely fun. Um, it's also equipped with, like, a uh, a warp beacon. So you can summon your team um, if, they're, if that jump point is available to them. So that also works inside of lanes, we found out. So... If you got to the, say, B1, and a uh, TDS flagship was down the other end, could drop his beacon, and you could actually warp to that. Oh, within the goodness. Lane. Oh, nice. And it can, like, summon the team, pretty much. That's going to be very scary. Yeah, if left like yes. that. yeah especially, yeah. especially if the change to... It, if 6v6 becomes a, a thing and not just, oh. a, not just a test... <sighs> You know, it will it will end up being okay. Protect this guy. Everyone here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, it was really useful. Some people said it was a bit overpowered, but 
dropping it I down would, the uh, enemy base. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. There, we'll see what happens. I, I would say to make it, you know, fair. I would, you know, make it destructible. Um, oh, no, it everything is. Everything like that. It is destructible, yeah, and it's it's yeah. a nice it's a nice large target, right? So it's not just like this tiny little detection buoy that's nearly impossible to shoot. It's yeah, it's bigger than say the small spotting drones and stuff. Okay, okay. as long as yeah, it's you know you can hit it with a a large hunter cannon, then good. I believe so. That that is the current state. Um, it. I was told it's going to come with another beacon, but that wasn't in on the build that I was playing as. So I don't know if the fighters were taking that spot or something. But an upgrade beacon. Oh. So you can also summon your team and also drop like a little upgrade station. Oh, I can force people to not be level <laughs> zero six minutes into the game now. Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> now, this is, uh, again, personal thought. Um, for the warp beacon, I don't know if this system could even be implemented, but to make it kind of fair and not blatantly overpowered, because, you know, even if it's destructible, once someone hits the jump button, the damage is done. If you destroy the beacon, they still will land there. They're still going to be coming. But if you give yeah. them that window to where if the beacon is destroyed, it also cancels the jump drives of the people that were going to said beacon, I think that would be a wonderful way to balance it. That Yeah, that would be, like hearing you say that, it's, yeah, that is something I like to hear. Yes. I would like mm -hmm. to see. It makes sense. Yeah, the... And also stops it from being superly overpowered, like, oh, he still, like, made the jump. It would it it would stop those those instances of uh, you know the the, huh. the the enemy the enemy titan gets into your base and even though you're right on top of him and you destroy that beacon immediately his entire team Someone still still, gets still into slips your through base. yeah still they had the, the jump widget open and they're waiting uh, for that just brief second. Yeah, this is this is this is another perfectly wonderful instance for those of you with a, uh, a competitive and devious mind to think of ways to abuse this wonderful ability that's going to be dropped. Exactly. On us yeah. And yes. Posted on the forum. Everywhere. Our designers will spend weeks putting something together, and then everyone should just rip it apart. Yes. Yes. But job. that's how things. That's how things do. get better. That, that is. It, it, it's true. It's it's it, It's survival of the fittest. It's evolution at its finest. I'm definitely aware of like being too close to something that you don't then realize. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. this totally happens. There, there's, there's also that uh, when when you're designing something a specific way, the the there there's the desire to use it the quote unquote right way, the way that you know it's supposed to be used. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of blind to the ways that. Uh, well, people can find to abuse it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like the, uh, say, let's, for example, the disruptor. Like, the ideal way for that to be played is just as a support ship. But it's ever so handy that it comes with the back capping ability <laughs> uh, later on in the game if you, like, know the ins and outs of the game. And you can play I would it also, that way. Uh, I would also hope that this new beacon will be deployed at least, you know, 3 to 4K away from the Titan when it's launched. Um, otherwise, you know, you're going to end up with the Titan trying to finagle itself and sitting on top of this beacon like a mother hen and just not letting anyone shoot it as it uses its body to block the mm -hmm. people that are jumping in. Yeah, at the moment, it just kind of poops it out. <laughs> yeah. Like, comes there, out of the back. Just bloop. Yeah, they, they, there, there was a, a, a bug... Uh, for a little while, which I I think has been fixed <laughs> with the with the uh, the detection buoy on the uh, equalizer, where you could back up to an asteroid and drop it right inside the asteroid, and the enemy team couldn't do anything about it because it mm. was inside the asteroid. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you not know that it has like a handy little drill on it, so it just drills into the <laughs> asteroid? I, I wasn't made aware of that functionality. <laughs> oh well. Uh, although, but... although with the introduction of destroyable, uh, 
uh, asteroids, asteroids and stuff, yeah, that yeah. would actually be pretty slick. You know, a, kind of like a stealth detector. It didn't show up on your radar, but you had that flashing red light just sitting on a rock somewhere going, Hey, that's not ours. Something in here. Yeah, <laughs> we should probably blow that up. That would be... I, that that would be fun. No. Destroy, destroyables add a whole new level to everything. Yes, yes. Um, it comes... The TDS flagship also has a Tempest cannon. That's the name of the ability on it. Um, uh. It's like a Gatling gun. And uh, basically just hold down the right mouse button <laughs> and it will fire at the person. But uh, that will probably use the energy system where it will deplete, and when it gets lower, it kind of just starts spurting out instead of coming out as a uh, constant stream. Oh, uh, so as so, you as you fire it, the lower your it's like energy overheating hits. in some. Okay, so so we're, we're getting the Gal Eight. <gasps> yeah, Jariah, Jariah makes a uh, a fair point um, that you know firing the beacon close to a station could wind up with people in the station and such. No, yeah, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I'm like sure you guys will get in ending up inside each other and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if you've been around for the thing that we've been doing recently, but there is a wonderful thing with the Reaper shielding. Um, and if you park yes. yourself up behind a hunter, <laughs> we, we wedged two hunters onto the side of the Reaper um, last night and turned on the shielding, and we just went for a cartwheel ride all the way up to the top of the station, and it was pretty marvelous. You, you found uh, Fractured Space's Rainbow Zone. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm aware of the uh, the shields and what they do. I think there's new code coming in. Okay, That's the answer pretty much for everything. I think it seems like most, most shields in the game or most cloaks are represented as physical objects within the engine instead of, you know, just blocking the damage or actually putting up a physics barrier to stop the projectile from coming in. So you're still getting a collision flag and things like that. So I'm sure there's optimization that can be made in the future and such. Yeah, probably. It's... <laughs> <laughs> There's there's all sorts of fun stuff to be done with uh, things that are physical while also not being physical. Some exactly. Spawnable yeah. things. Um. And yeah, it's time defense, so it can't. The main intention behind it was to kind of round out uh, TDS because mm -hmm. it had a sort of. Um, Weird mix of support and yeah. one attack ship. And yeah. The yeah. one attack ship is kind of very goal oriented in its nature. It kind of has to be this thing that is pointing in the right direction, positive, negative, 20 degrees in front of it. So it, there's this letterbox of a window that you have to shoot in. Otherwise, you're just you're getting no damage out of it. Like a lot of us would like to see a firing arc change on it. Uh, to where you know it fires four guns from all angles, or at least two guns from all angles, instead of like one from the back. And there's stuff to be talked about with it, and things to change for the future. But right now, you get above it, you get it below it. In any ship, it's dead. It, that's it. It's done. It, it it doesn't it doesn't it isn't a close combatant, even though it feels like one. It's really a medium short range ship you want to be sitting 8k maybe away from folks with the reaper it feels like to be really effective because you've got you've got that speed on your projectiles and that volume of fire to still be useful at that range but yeah but if, it's it's also just little nitpicks here and there it's not even really a sustainable amount of damage to be threatening in that tiny letterbox of a window yeah like I, most of the time, I ignore Reapers. The most threatening thing the Reaper has is those Raven missiles, which hurt. Yeah, that's 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 a little a little weird. I mean, it's cool. It it it, it, it definitely it definitely is cool. But no. yeah, <laughs> thank you, Anarchos, for the for the host. Um, but it definitely, uh, it definitely does feel weird, especially I've noticed that it looks like you can get, like, eight turrets to the front, 
You're only shooting yes. four. It, You're it, only shooting it, four it of feels, the nose cone. It, is, it feels super forced. It's always feel, felt super forced to me that you have the firing arcs that you do. Like, I understand the desire for firing arc because it, it does introduce a level of skill. It does make things interesting. But it just always felt super forced on the Reaper. Like, we're going to have this because we want to have this. Whereas with the Hunter, it since it is so mobile, it allows yeah. you to actually get into those positions easier. And I don't know, just the geometry of the ship made it feel like it was more made sensible. it seem like yes i can only fire two cannons from this position it's feasible it's right that's correct yeah mm -hmm. it's it's good where it is in its firing arcs at 20 degrees positive negative maybe a little bit of leeway on the 20 degrees to the side because sometimes when your ship's turning it's listing a little here and there mm -hmm. um but that's you know small changes and in changing that it would buff the hunter to a scary place, mm -hmm. even with that small little maybe five degrees extra on each side. Mm -hmm. Oh, the hunter's the hunter's already terrifying. It's already pretty scary. Yeah, that is. It's 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 great that uh, that it, it that it is the introductory ship, but it also has such a high skill skill ceiling to it. Right. No. It's it's the starter ship. It's the one you suck with and think. Oh, there's going to be something better. I'm going to get a really cool upgrade as soon as I get in this tech line. And then as you get further into the tech line, you're like, huh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just, 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 yeah, just that, that, you know, alert, seeing how much more difficult things are to use effectively. Also, sometimes you just end up in a game with rainbow and then you realize, oh, yeah, the hunter's actually pretty freaking good. <laughs> yeah, Maybe it's, I should. Uh, Something I should be worried about. Yeah, and it's it's even worse uh, when you have people like Gravy on your team who are just in tow with the hunter. The hunter will long blink to some place, and then the disruptor will immediately be like, "I got you, bro," and be right there with you every <laughs> single time. Man, and you just can't die either. So it makes the hunter that much more threatening because then you have two ships that are blinking the exact same distances with each other. And it's basically like the hunter just strapping on a utility belt filled with gravy mm -hmm. uh, and then <laughs> just coming to some stoppable force. Utility belt filled with gravy. There are you can you can delicious. thank Godline for that. <laughs> he brought up that image another day ago. <laughs> now I'm just thinking of Batman and like I'm gonna get this better ring. Oh, Utility gravy. <laughs> with gravy. Take my bat gravy. <laughs> like yeah, people. <laughs> oh, uh, man, bat gravy. That's something else entirely. <laughs> mm. Not on this stream, Zared. Stop it. <laughs> it was right there. I'm sorry. It was right there. We all knew it. We, no one had to say it. <laughs> I must ruin everything. No. Oh. Uh, oh, God. How dare you. So then that's the, that's the, that's the Titan. Uh, that's the Titan. What, what, what's yeah. the other ship? Because I don't know anything about the other ship. Like, I don't even know. Uh, who's oh, make the it. Ranger. Ranger. Um, oh, I, I only yes. have bits and pieces of information on this. Continue. So... The Ranger has the same flight model as the Disruptor. Uh, okay. So it is just as fast as the Disruptor and movable. Mm -hmm. um, it is equipped with a new, unique uh, main weapon. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a, a, a longbow. So you've, you have to hold to charge up rather than, say, like the sniper shot, which was just wait around in sniper mode and the charge happens. Mm -hmm. And although it wasn't doing as much damage on Friday when we were testing it. Um, you can see the potential there of like holding to do more damage uh, and then releasing at a certain point. Uh, Volks made a good point, and he does archery, and this is kind of where the design of the this um, weapon comes from, of like a an archer. Mm -hmm. um, he wants where you could hold it, reach a maximum of damage, but if you hold it too long, that damage will drop off because, say, like it can't sustain that amount of power, which yeah. I, to me sounds like a cool design choice to make, kind of like an active reload from gears, but yes. on your main weapon. Um, so it'd be useful to, for dealing loads of damage, or you can just lightly, lightly peck it mm -hmm. and throw shots off really quickly 
um, say, to keep someone from cloaking or that, which was very cool to hear. And mm -hmm. in action, it was a bit <laughs> lackluster because the damage, I don't think, was correct. Uh, it was only outputting, say, something like 400 damage at its max. It was like, nah, we wanted to be oh. a bit more, yeah. Yeah, a bit like, more powerful. Well, that's, was that 400 damage against armored or broken Yeah, armor? yeah that's, that's against armor. But okay, that's that's still four hundred damage against armor. I mean, that's the equivalent of four hunter heavy cannons um, hitting broadside on an armored target that's not broken. So if it's keeping in line with that damage on a broken armor target, it's going to deal like two thousand to twenty two hundred damage from full charge. It, I think it, the problem was the charge time compared mm -hmm. charge to time. The, 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 the damage output. Okay, yeah. so, and what was, was the what was the charge time you guys started with? Uh, I wasn't playing on the, the playing. small okay. amount of tests of Rangers. I was putting a Titan, so I was having fun. Uh, <laughs> rather, than, <laughs> rather than dealing uh, with Archery 101. <laughs> yeah. um, it also comes down uh, with a shutdown repair function, so it can immobilize itself within the battle and repair itself, but leaves Ooh. it as a sitting duck. Uh, for any, I think it takes increased damage as well uh, whilst it's doing this. Uh, and there's should be some changes coming with that, perhaps, because you can get to full health and you're still stuck there. Yeah, the uh, uh, a, a, a little bit of a self heal is something I'd actually like to see on all ships, but that's a that's an entirely different discussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, yep. But that would eliminate the need for you know healers and such really like the ship taking damage it's out in space doesn't have a gantry I, I mean it should have an internal repair crew to maybe you know little ticks of regeneration here and there maybe something you take as a trait sort of mm -hmm. or you know crew skill or yeah. something yeah. when crew starts to become hugely beneficial to your stuff um but yeah uh the the self heal on a ranger makes it seem like a ship that's supposed to go out and be a little long-range pest and then hide behind a rock and heal itself, get that regeneration, and keep going. It, 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 it evokes the, the stereotype of a ranger. It's a frontiersman. A ranger, yeah. Actually, that actually would be kind of maybe a good name for like a premium version of it. <laughs> Frontier? The frontiersman, yeah. Yeah. That'd be pretty good. Um, It's going to have prox mines, but they may function... They're going to function differently uh, from the ones, say, like the frigate has. Okay. Um, that's still something that was being worked on. That was um, Al's sort of department. And when I talked to him on Wednesday, he was like, yeah, uh, they're not completely ready just yet. But hopefully when we go in tomorrow, uh, there'll be something in place uh, for me to look at. And it should also come with a sort of like a detect boy but it's a pulsating AOE, like you can target it and fire. So, and so, so in, in, instead of detect. ah, uh, okay. So instead of the area denial style of detect, where you sh you shoot out the buoy and it's okay if you're cloaked, you need to not come in this area for a while. It's a shorter cooldown. It's a okay. I need to flashlight in this area real quick. Okay, there's nobody there. Yeah, style. Okay, that's, neat. That, that, that's gonna make that's gonna make a lot of uh, a lot of stealth pilots not very happy. Oh no, no, <laughs> not at all. I have now. Uh, have you? But they could go invisible. <laughs> have you seen Ooh. its armor variation at all? Like, what's his health like so far? Uh, again, that's something I haven't uh, looked at too closely because I only okay. got a, a full working build uh, on Friday. Of this, because we've uh, added some other systems like a chat thing, which has been getting a quite, quite a bit of test, and lots of issues just creeping up, like crashes mm -hmm. coming out of nowhere. And you're like, this worked before. What happened? <laughs> so that's been fixed before we actually got the uh, the new ships. Witchcraft happened. Problem. Yeah, <laughs> coding witchcraft. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's basically all I have so far. They they look great. Like the Ranger, I love the the design of the Ranger right now, just because it's so different looking from everything else. Like one side's got those yeah, space balls. The the, the the screenshots that I've seen of it, it's very it's it's asymmetrical, and one section looked like it had like giant shells 
stored in it, like for a really freaking huge cannon. So someone said oh, well, that was in, off the top of my head. I was like, maybe they're like two large hydron colliders, and that's what's charging up the weapon. That's like where you're that? charging up the shot, like you're holding it and it's spinning up the the pulse inside there and firing out. That'd be pretty That'd, good. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, see, I could make games. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but the the new model for the TDS flagship looks really great. I can't wait to see it in more detail because all we have is that little gif of what we've seen of it. Yeah, um, yeah. that's floating around. It's kind of like, oh, it's so shaky. I can kind of make out some engines and a bridge. It sort of kind of reminds me of that one rocket sled from Gundam years ago. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's definitely a nice addition into TDS. I feel. Yeah, the TDS. I, I, I'm excited to see more TDS and Zarek ships because I mean, as much as I like USR, it's got I, too many, and I do. It, it's it's got, got so many more ships lot. than everything else right now. And and Zarek. Um, oh, that's that's another thing um, in the balance discussion. Sorry to bounce back to this really quick, but the the current armor value of the carrier. How do you personally feel about it, or have you played the carrier much? I was playing the carrier. Uh, I think a week and a half ago. That that's what I like to do at the moment. I switch between one, like play for a couple of days in one specific ship, mm -hmm. uh, right. maining it. Let's say, um, I I, d I don't think I can play that as well as other people. That's the issue. Yeah, and... the, but um, the the main real thing with it right now, and a lot of people will agree on this. Even if you are that good person and you know what you're doing. The ship's armor nerf down to was it 1250 from 2000, um, you know, effectively punching it for 800 of its armor value. Um, it made it into a piece of tissue paper to where something can kill it pretty much faster than a flagship, especially um, the enforcer, especially like, the enforcer, assassins. Yeah. I kill it in a frigate all the time. Uh, just, you know, a multi-shot frigate just flying around it, shooting it. It might take a minute, but it's going to die, and then it can't do yeah. anything. Like, even with the fighters, with the bombers, well, the bombers, point defense, that's that. They're done. Um, and right now, it's kind of in a, it's in a bad situation to where it does not function competitively at all. No one will take it in a competitive match. Yeah, yeah if it, like, there's been zero carriers in tournament matches, if I'm yeah. correct. Well... That's because we're not allowed to take them. Otherwise, oh yes, of course, see, yeah. Mm. You would see infiltrators everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> very good point. Completely forgot about that. Um, <laughs> infiltrators, yeah, has, has proven to be at least at least to me a charmingly underrated ship. I remember flying it initially and being like, "What? What is? What is this? This isn't. This isn't." anything and then i got murdered a few dozen times it's like oh okay yeah okay i i get it now it it feels like it's more of a defensive cloak than an offensive cloak it is it with... is completely you don't cloak with it really you you fly around you shoot things and then if you're in a very bad spot you're like disarm i'm gonna go this way yeah it replaces it replaces the blink for a lot of a lot of a lot of ships, and I it think does. and I th the radial disarm being five seconds is huge. Yeah, that's, but, a, that's a major disarm. Yeah, it, it is. It is a different take on a ship style that I think really works out. You know, this this more methodical style of stealth ship where it's just like okay i'm not i'm not waiting for my moment and then blah like the assassin is you really have to be patient and either you know judge a team fight if that's what's going on or wait until you see that one guy that's out by himself and you're like all right i can take this guy on right right now because those uh, especially those the slug guns do a lot more dps than you think they do do one only yes they do what, 200 damage for a pair of shots that stacks yep. up very very quickly oh goodness yes it does uh you can rip a lot of things apart with that slug cannon and it's got very good hit detection on it too mm -hmm. um 
along with the fact something that uh, a few of us have been talking uh, about between Phoenix and Helion 3 um, and a little bit of Loa in there in the conversations was the ion blast on the infiltrator being such a large area mixed with the slow drones because the slowing effect is at least a 50% reduction, if not more. You just take such a huge impact from that. And the mobility reduction on it for how hard they are to kill is a gigantic detriment to anyone. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have that ion blast that comes in, and there's nothing you can possibly do to get away from it lest you have a blink. Um, so what, an idea we were spitballing and throwing back and forth was <laughs> to change the ion blast into a variation of a skill shot nuke. To where you have a singular projectile, and when it hit the target, it would consume all the stacks. Mm -hmm. So you couldn't go around with infiltrators double-chaining stacks. <clears throat> but at the same time, that's another form of teamwork anyway, of double-chaining stacks. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a up and down of, is this blatantly overpowered, or is there something someone can do to actually avoid it? So, you know, a reduction on the slow... Um, the drones would be a good balance change, and you have something to say, Chris? Yeah, uh, I think the biggest issue right now is they blink, the ion drones. Yeah. That, yes. for me, because I've had, where I've played as the infiltrator, and I've had the uh, hunters blink out of my ion blast uh, to escape uh, the devastating uh, damage, and I've also had enforcers be able to boost out, but they were boosted out of the ion blast, missed it, but my ion drones just ended up blinking on them again and stacking. For, so it was just me waiting for my ion blast to come up again. Mm -hmm. And I think it, if if there was travel time between <coughs> the ion drones uh, getting uh, getting to places, it could help people get away and possibly uh, sort some more out than than I initially think. Yeah, de definitely because it would stop that slow. Yeah, the stacks. Because while having drones and stuff able to blink to target is is a really cool thing, and and I like that. I do think it is definitely needed, especially for stuff like the uh, like the disruptor. Yeah, um, the heal drones absolutely need that blink. Yeah, yeah. Ha having it, it could maybe it would be a good distinction to say, okay, if you're offensive in nature, you can boost, but no blinking. And if you're if you're Defensive in nature, you get a blink with regards yeah, so to drones it, and fighters and stuff. I mean, the ion drones are offensive and debuffing mm -hmm. yeah, at the same time, yes. slowing and damaging. And, and, and to have that instantly a bit too much. Yeah, have that instantly on somebody is is crazy. Uh, well, not, that and not you can crazy. chain them. You can actually, uh, if there's five people in a lane, four people, whatever, how many people, you can put your drones on one person, immediately tell them to go to the next one and the next one, and just apply stacks <laughs> over and over. Just wait for that one stack, then apply it to the next person and the next person. I've had it where I've gotten five stacks on three people. Oh, wow. Um, and profane. just nuked them all while they were sitting on a point. And it was, it was completely dumb. And mind you, this was a pub match, and they didn't know that the stacks were about to, you know, completely be very bad for them in a moment. Um, but, yeah, it, it can happen like that, to where they just blink, 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 blink. Also, the slow effect isn't actually tied to the drones. It's tied to the debuff. So, for the duration of, you know, that six-second countdown, or 15-second countdown, what have you, that the drones have applied, you're slow for that whole thing, even after drones are gone. Yeah, but it would gradually decrease, so you could, if you were smart enough, be able to escape them mm -hmm. all together. It, it, it decreases, but like yeah. once the drones are gone, I feel that that effect should be gone with the drones. If they're not actively picking at you and attacking you, there's no reason for you to be slow. What? It's no, just I definitely a, see. a time debuff. What would you think about something like this taking the slow off of the drones and putting it on the the sphere that you get before your actual explosion from the ion detonation so you shoot you shoot out you know you get all your stacks on somebody you shoot out the whole detonation bit it pops up with that sphere and that sphere anything in that area is going to be slowed regardless of whether it has stacks or not because that, that will accomplish two things. That gets the slow off of the drones, 
that gives you a little bit of utility saying, hey, okay, maybe I don't have stacks on this guy, but my buddy's in trouble, so I'm going to slow this guy. You know, but... that, sounds, uh, that sounds fair and something I'd like to see tested um, mm -hmm. as a balance change possibility. Yeah, that would... It would add a different flavor, at least. I don't, I, I don't know if it would fix problems, but it would at least make different ones. It's something, like... I feel more work needs to go into side grades now because we're getting all these new ships and they're just coming with stock loadouts mm -hmm. and everyone's coming up with these great ideas of how to, how to change things but it's like let's have way more variables on, mm -hmm. on things now. Yeah, um, but the problem with that is the core variable. Like you can, you can add as many variations as you want, but the problem still the, exists. The, yeah, yeah. In the so, thing. Totally right. The core, the core one needs to be changed to be correct, and then you get the variables. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So that's why we're talking about you know balancing now, and then once that's hammered down, we can go. Okay, let's add stuff. Yes. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing at all. But yeah, um, more loadouts. Definitely, I'd like to see. I'd like to see. I don't. It, I don't know if it exists, but definitely, I think a mega thread for alternate loadout options. Oh, again, US, USR get all the love, really, on the uh, yeah, it, on the side grades. Yeah, all the loadout options. And, <laughs> and I, I, I think it would be good to have. It, to have well, one to see more stuff because I mean, I'd, I'd I'd like to try out different weapons on my Enforcer. I'd like to try out different rep weapons on my Reaper. You know, I I do I I would like maybe not as, certainly not as insane as it was, but I would like the old scythe beam back in some form or another, <laughs> where it, where it's more of a a finisher move than a hey get your freaking armor out the way. Like I it is right now. I would like to see the scythe beam focused uh, the, the big sweeping arc thing it's very iconic it's cool but having you know a singular beam much like the new tds flagship yeah. where you could just say i need to hit this target i want to shoot this thing it makes no sense for my lasers to be flying everywhere <laughs> across the screen all willy-nilly mm -hmm. Maybe. So maybe that could be a, a variation. You yeah. have the big yeah. sweeping laser, and then you have a much shorter range pinpoint laser. That would that would be fun to play around with. Much and like the near beam on the Corvette, only not three K because three K is silly. <laughs> Especially when like, you don't have any any uh, any travel abilities. No no. Uh, yeah. You don't have blink. You need blink for that. But then again, that might that might end up being too good. That 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 near beam heal is huge to have go off in an instant. It, it is huge, um, and gluing yourself to the other ship to make that happen is you know a huge thing. I would like to see the near beam maybe expanded by a couple thousand meters because three K is such a ridiculous space to get to someone in. Mm -hmm. Um, especially in a pinch uh, as a healer. But yeah, if you, you have to, as that healer, dedicate yourself to a single vessel to make that heal viable. Also, didn't they, uh, they changed it, didn't they? It went from 41% to 29%, at least in the tooltips. I, I wouldn't know. I haven't kept, I haven't been able to keep up with the uh, exact numbers, but that sounds like it's something that could happen. Maybe, ooh, ooh, ooh. Maybe uh, give it a little bit of extra range and also some fall off. Like we get, we get damage fall off. Maybe, maybe it has some healing fall off where you do still have to be, maybe call it four or five k in order to get the maximum effect, but you heal out to maybe eight or ten or a de a decreased effect. That'd be pretty neat. Just you know, that person is dying now. I'm not close enough. I want to give them that little extra bit to stay alive for a little longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. But yeah, um, as it was pointed out in the stream, um, we've gone over most of our topics now, um, and now we're just you know going over our willy-nilly ideas to be part of a mega thread. Uh, do mm -hmm. you guys want to start wrapping this up? Uh, sure. If you guys have places to be, we can certainly wrap this up. 
the other option. Oh no, is, I was uh, just saying because you know we we were wanting to keep this one a little shorter so the community could watch it easier instead of you know going through two hours of us ranting about well, things. We're 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 sitting at an hour and forty minutes right oh. now. So we've I mean, already broken that. Yeah, I gotta go I to mean, the toilet. <laughs> Then, 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 go ahead and go ahead and do that. I don't know. Should we do a a, a a QA with the viewers that have been so nice to show up while we're actually doing this? I I think that's I, absolutely fair. Yeah, I will return. All right. Let let Chris have his body break. Yes. Then we can we can maybe field something as you know community members. You know, hey, do you have an opinion? You know, kind of stuff. But go ahead, start. Please start throwing stuff out there. We 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 all have access to the chat, and we can all see stuff that interests us, or or is is commentable blah, 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 on. Also, Fox's forehead. Yeah, my forehead because I'm staring at Chris's screen, <laughs> and I'm not sure what that's a painting of. In that the background. is a painting of Batman in handcuffs being ex escorted by two police officers. See, I thought the guy on the left was a monkey for the moment, <laughs> as, this, as I didn't really see it very clearly. I, I, I actually have it on my main screen, so it's taking oh, up it's taking okay. up a very large portion of an ADP. Oh, AP, what's the Raven? Oh, well, not here right now. Just got back, so. So oh, we 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 had a we had a, a question from Jiraiya for for KP, you. KP, what's the Raven? Yeah, what's the Raven? What is the Raven? Okay, that answers I answers that question. <laughs> I believe <laughs> the Raven was the prior name for the Titan before they called it the Titan. Possibly. Or, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's. Ask me what I know about the Raven. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the Revenant is the upcoming Reaper premium ship. If you played during the free weekend, then you're going to have access to this new premium ship that's releasing uh, for the TDS line. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be it's gonna be super awesome. At least it better be, or I will cry. Uh, so it's gonna be so pretty. <laughs> What are your thoughts on 6v6 becoming the main map? I I wouldn't mm, I think I would I would play it but again I would I'd want to keep it 5v5 as like the original start point yeah, sort of they, entry level. Things things would need to change definitely some optimization but I mean that's that's to be done anyway. But I think the map would need a little bit of expanding in order to make 6v6 good because Yeah, I think it does 6 it does get a little cramped with six people in each lane constantly. Yeah. Just just maybe ten or twenty percent more space. Cause I mean that would that would end up being a lot of extra space. Would go a long way towards making it not feel so cramped. We would also different uh, play accounts. I'd like to see different maps. Yeah. That would be the main thing. Absolutely. Because yeah, because it, it, it we'd have to rebalance the home stations, the forward stations, the income for damage and kills, the effects of gas. It would it, it's going to require a whole separate you know balance pass in order to get different numbers to work. As we've already seen with uh, League of Legends, having different different numbers on of characters on one map when you're still working with those 5v5 numbers doesn't work as well because some things that work great in a 5v5 situation don't work at all in a 3v3 and some things that don't really work 5v5 are just completely and ridiculously overpowered in a 3v3 Absolutely. so there's it's a cool idea but it's a long way off for being something official because it would Will require a hell of a lot of attention. I'd I'd definitely love to at some point get a, a couple of servers dedicated to being six v six. Um, and Jim was really excited when on Thursday he popped over and was like, "Crispy, I need you, I need you to sort this out." And I was like, "That sounds cool. Let's do this." Yes. <laughs> and well, sort well, it out. 
Uh, on the whole, I think everybody is just as ex just as excited as he is. Um, because yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun playing those six v six matches. You know, it, it it it's been a very pleasant change of pace from from five v fives. Make it thirty. 32v32. I just saw infiltrator. that. <laughs> no, the infiltrator. The infiltrator is just fine. Yeah, it's just it, right. It's, that happy medium. Not yeah. too powerful. It is it is it is scary when played correctly, but if okay. not played correctly, can be ignored, much like a hunter, which I think is should be the target for everything, quite honestly. Yes. Absolutely. That that was uh, something Willis had said before. That he wants to see every every ship become like the Hunter, to where it's easily recognizable. It can be played in new skill cap and um, you know higher skill cap players, um, and be treated differently throughout mm -hmm. those ranks, and yep. kind of be the introductory ship and be balanced enough to be good. Um, the way it is, and not be blatantly overpowered. Yeah, the, the the hunter, the hunters are really, really lucky note to basically have from the inception yeah. of the game. It gives you a perfect point to go off of. Uh, so, do we have a uh, question? Is, is FS planned to be esports? Uh, not planned. Not yeah. Planned, yet. planned isn't something that really happens with esports. You kind of hope and you deal with as best as you can as it comes up, but like, I don't think we're gonna have an LCS type thing. Yeah, not anytime soon. No. Yeah, I mean, not, that, not soon. No, that is but, that uh, is something that will evolve. As, as I listed before in the stream, I'm not sure if you were there for it. But I buy power is taking um, a small interest in our team um, and moving fractured space forward into the competitive scene in the coming months. So we have that to look forward to. Mm -hmm. CLG uh, uh, fractured space team, call me. <laughs> I mean, technically, we are already at the sort of uh, benchmark, like the international. Obviously, yeah. Um, in Doha, I mean, they're up to thirty million. So you know, we're, we're pretty pretty close to that. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> I was about to say so thirty million in prizes, man. I need to clean <laughs> and play FS more. Uh, please never take me seriously. Anyone who's listening. No. No. Also, I f I feel like we need to give everyone like a little participation ribbon to stick on their shirt for like the surviving this tournament. <laughs> surviving is a good, a good term for it. Uh, this is something that's been said loads of times. Uh, this isn't concrete. Yes, but um, there are things we do want to give people like dev tags, the devs, mm -hmm. just so people know uh, that they beat a dev at their own game. <laughs> and, just, but isn't that like, everyone that, in Fractured Space right now? Hey, whoa, whoa! <laughs> we want, we want to make you feel good. Shots fired! Right. Shots fired! Crispy, we're it's busy, a known fact. We're busy making a game. Jeez. Yes, exactly. That's why <laughs> devs are bad at their own games because they're working so hard on it. They don't play it. Um, yeah. I don't even know where we were. <laughs> Talking about surviving the tournament. Talking about devs being super awesome at the game. Yeah, that's yes. where we were. Yes. Uh... Dead lost air. The yeah. <laughs> lost the train of thought. You, you were talking about dev tags and... Oh, yeah. Uh, say, like, we've got the Vanguard and Forerunner packs and Harbinger packs. Like, another sort of thing you can equip in in a slot to sort of just be like, hey, I've got this. And people oh. go, what's, what's, what's that? Yeah. I, I, think that, I think that's a really cool idea. That, Maybe yeah. not display it in-game. Then it becomes like a target for people like, oh, he has the flashy thing. He must be super good. Uh, and obviously, they're not yeah. going to be super like good the, when they have five uh, on them. The, the yeah, that was the summoner icons was, in League of Legends. Yeah, that was, that was also a, a point I wanted to bring up. Um, a friend brought up a very valid thing to me, um, and this is... Uh, something they introduced in CSGO 
um, to where if you participated in this tournament or if you did this thing or if you had the game for X amount of years or if you were there since Alpha, you got an option of a little stamp or icon that would sit next to your place in the leaderboards. So in the actual leaderboards, you would have this displayed little icon saying, I've done this, blah, blah, blah. You can I'm cool shit, basically. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool shit. I've been <laughs> here. I've done things. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dota does something like that at the moment with the international because you have to level up your compendium and it, it shows when I'm in game that my compendium is better than others because it it's gold and has a ring around it and when i'm Ooh, in the base I, I sparkle all gold because i've funneled all my money into them <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah i'm definitely down for an idea of showing like we've got the ranks commander captains and admirals but and no- there's such yeah there's such a wide range within that like a commander could be a new commander who barely knows things about the game or he could be like a higher up commander mm-hmm. and it just needs ways to really differentiate players right you need, you need more are. rank steps more, yeah yeah more, more ranks uh having having huh. a proper matchmaking system in there will help that because you can it, it would be really messy and has in the past led to a lot of like you know trash talking in a community you know, where you could just, like, uh, I, I know in League it used to be it just, like, straight up displayed your ELO. And while that was good because you could say, hey, I'm 2750 ELO, I'm hot shit, you know, you could also, it also introduced the problem of, yeah, I'm only 1200 and people would dogpile on, you know, folks like that. Yeah, so, like, right. like Darsan was saying, he wants it to be displayed in the game. I think it's more of a give people the option to toggle it on or off, like, mm-hmm. to display how how awesome they are mm-hmm. or not that would uh yeah that would certainly be good uh from jiraiya any news on matchmaker i'd like to play fractured space again <laughs> uh well you can play fractured space right now yeah i mean no one's stopping yeah. you <laughs> certainly so uh, if you're ever available you need to come in for one of the one of the nights where we've got folks doing the 6v6 because i think you would have a blast with that oh it's loads um, of fun uh, you can you can talk to Sarah Fine to 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 hear all about it. I'm sure he will talk your ear off about it because it's um, been it's been pleasant all around. And yeah, Matchmaker has to come with friends and and stuff, as we were saying earlier on in mm. the podcast. Like they're coming, probably first draft of it in the next two months or so. That'll be. Been what I've been told. That'll be good. Having 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 an in-game friends list, having matchmaking, having in-game chat rooms. Because I know I know, kind of selfish, but like in instances where I'm streaming, I, in when in, back in my War Thunder days, I used to have viewers along with me, and I, I that was a lot of fun for me. And I'd like to be able to do that in Fractured Space too. You know, yeah. Have 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 a little <laughs> chat room in game and. Say, that's right, one just... of the things that's kind of been working on like chat system so you can have the same chat carried over from uh, like, <clears throat> the match into the lobbies and, and stuff I uh, would also on that note I'd like to see a post game chat as mm-hmm. well yeah yeah no definitely because yeah. people could miss the GG's and stuff and uh, you can really have good conversations yeah they also good conversations opens the door to and, toxic- you know, toxicity and, and stuff people. but yeah, yeah. yeah. it opens the door to toxicity but it also opens the door to like you know, finding really good players and being like, hey, we worked well together. Want to find another match together? Yeah. And yeah, it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's awesome. I, I love stuff like that. Because oh, you, you guy was the good, dick, push the big you red get button. the bad. Yeah. The, the bad is always there. And, yeah. you know, you're still going to have an insurmountable amount of good because the core community for Fractured Space right now is very good. Mm-hmm. It is one of the best starting communities I have seen today. Yeah. Or you're all a bunch of hackers. <laughs> yeah, or we're all a bunch of hackers. <laughs> Cynical network techs that hate everyone. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 been it has been really cool to to see we 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 have had a couple of uh less than savory individuals pop up, but they've all left fractured space because 
we've gotten together like like the Power Rangers, and we're just like, Mm-mm. You, no friendship. Yes, <laughs> with the power of friendship and giant spaceships, my <laughs> ships. Actually, no, I, I I love the community. Like this is uh, my first sort of game where. I get to engage with the community as it's it's happening. This is my first early access game mm-hmm. uh, before it was on console tiles, which I was really right. It was big and evolved, and you were just kind of shoved into the room filled with all the piranhas uh, and fourteen year olds, and kind of <laughs> like, I don't want to be here. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, it's Xbox kind Live of- now. But, certain, but like, yeah, I congrats, certain man. I, I'm, like, I'm glad you get to come on this ride with all of us and mm-hmm. get to experience it all growing up. Exactly. Open development. Early access. Yes. Buzzwords. Yes. Transparency. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, and thanks for inviting me on, on here, Zared. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, the duck works. It's been a pleasure. Well, it's been, it's been great having you. Uh, it's been great doing all of this and in fact we've been going for an hour and 55 so i'd say now's about as good a time as any to wrap it up uh anything that you guys would like to say go over before we uh before we call it a day Uh, i I think we've addressed most everything haven't we yeah um watch the kerr versus lower match happening oh yeah that's right next Uh, two or three hours in in the next two or three hours yeah we have Kerr versus Loa. It's going to be big. Um, it's going to be one hell of a match. Uh, and yeah, uh, thanks for coming, everyone. Thanks for watching us rant and banter for two hours for the ones who are here for the two-hour duration. <laughs> but yeah, uh, thank you all for joining us. Um, for those of you in the U.S., it is Father's Day, so call them up and say... I don't know if it's Father's Day over here. I'm a terrible son, but... <laughs> it keeps on like that's this is one of these things where it's always on different days. Mother's Day seems to be on a different day, and then Father's Day is just mm-hmm. looped in well, just, one everywhere. Just call him and be like, Dad, it's Father's Day in America. If <laughs> I forgot, I'm wishing it now. Or just be like, hey, yes. how's things? Yes, exactly. I've done this now. Is things okay? Yeah. Oh, so, right. so, so, yes. <laughs> it it sh- should should he be a positive force in your life? Please call your dad and tell him. You, know, you love them. Thank you for playing catch with me and not murdering me when I did stupid things as a kid. You know, that sort of stuff. And, uh, yeah, we will proceed with more Duckworks discussion and fun stuff, hopefully in about another month. Hopefully, Maybe next, next year we'll have a Father's Day event in Fractured Space. That, that, would, be, that would be super yes. awesome. But yeah, we will see you guys. I will probably see you guys tomorrow. Um, yes. But duck, for, for Duckworks, we are done probably until uh, next month, and uh, we will see you all then. Bye! Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.